What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. That's all of a sudden at age, what, 60? He's just going to break bad? Joshua steps up in the building today to talk about his experience with the trucking industry. He went, took a test. Unfortunately, he was pop positive. And he's here today to talk about his experience. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. What's going on, boss man? I can't. How's everything? Everything's good. Everything's good, bro. Let's uh, go in and get it in. Joshua in the building. So, yeah, man. <laughs> so we're gonna jump right into it, man. So you know, you came, you you came to me, and and by the way, thanks. Uh, I appreciate no, no the problem. support and everything. But you came to me in a, in a, in a text, and you know, in the background, we were going back and forth. And I want to apologize because I, I was talking to somebody else, but I didn't have the number. I didn't have the name or number or 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 what I was supposed to have tagged to the number that I was talking to. So when I texted you and I was telling you about what went on in that one TikTok video, I was I was tagged somebody else. So my fault on that. But um Enough of that. Let's uh, let's get into it right quick, man. So you so you was working for CRST and then you you was called in for a random drug test and then got terminated. What happened? Let's go back. No. Well, well, what happened was that so I was formerly employed at CRST um, since the, my entire beginning. Um, since the very first time that I began at the company, I had been having like so many problems with this whole trucking journey. But um, nevertheless, the needle was hit on the head with um, with the last incident that happened, which was me failing a drug test from secondhand smoke. So basically, what happened was that I had been over the road and I had tried to go to another company, um, which was Trans Am, but that didn't work out. So I just decided to go back to CRSC. Um, so it was really just a matter of me reinstating my employment. Long story short, they sent me to an orientation. Um, I went to the orientation. Prior to going to the orientation, I had taken the DOT urine and I had taken the drug test. I mean, I'm sorry, the hair follicle test. And um, I hadn't gotten the results before I went to the orientation. So they were still pending while I was actually at the orientation. So long story short, um, I ended up getting like a phone call from the medical examiners who were working under my who were working at CRST. Um, and they told me that I had tested positive for marijuana in my hair. And I was really baffled because, I mean, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs whatsoever. And um, I had been told a million times that you can't fail from secondhand smoke. And so I really didn't think I had anything to worry about. And so I was just very baffled. But long story short, um, Although I didn't get a DOT violation because the DOT violation, you only get a clearinghouse violation if you fill the urine test because the urine test is the one that's actually mandated by the state of, by, by the, um, by the um, United States Department of Transportation. Um, but nevertheless, um, even with me, um, even with me not having a clearinghouse violation and, um, even with me just failing the hair test alone, which is the company mandated one, like when I go and apply to a company, when they see the fact that I have like a fail, a failed hair follicle test, like none of them want to hire me. So it's like, and I've I've been out of employment since that time. I mean, it's like, and I'm damn near like on the verge of being extremely broken homeless. All right, so damn it, man. Um, I know that was a lot, but yeah. <laughs> let me let, let let me unpack this right quick. So you were working for CRST in the beginning. I I'm I'm going to assume CRST was was the first job that got you your license or how how did that work? How yeah. how did you begin work with uh, so, CRST? So basically I I I got my license through CRST and upon getting my license I was also employed at CRST because I went through the training program that they have there and I passed the, the test and everything. So I got my CDL there and I was also an active employee there after getting the CDL. Um, I decided to leave CRST, however, because there was a company that I had sought out, which was Trans Am. 
Um, but things didn't really work out at, but in, but in order for me to have going to Trans Am, I had to pretty much resign from CRST. So I ended up resigning and I decided to go to Trans Am, but things didn't work out there because they didn't really have quite what I was looking for. So I decided to reinstate okay. my employment let, at let, CRST. Let, let me, let me, let me stop you. Let me, let me stop you for a second. Okay. So yeah. Trans Am, uh, <sighs> Trans Am, bro. Did did you 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 say that they they didn't have what you was looking for? But but did you truly do your research on Trans Am? I mean, that uh, going from CRST to Trans Am, it's like going to the same company, bro. I mean, that's just my opinion. Yeah. Well, to be honest, um. I just, I don't really know. I guess maybe I had already gotten comfortable at CRST. And I, I mean, honestly, as far as pay wise, I haven't really gotten too much of a real like difference between them. I've, I've been told that Trans Am apparently is like one of the lower, even worse than CRST. So, I mean, to be honest, I, I really don't know much too, too much about the, the reputation of the companies because I, I, I was primarily with CRST, so um, I don't really know too much about the other okay. ones. Okay, that's that's. But yeah, that's but, but they didn't have what I was really looking for. All yeah. right, so that's. And fair. I also didn't really like the way they. Oh, go ahead. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. They, you, no, no, you I was that? also saying I, I did, Oh, I was saying I didn't really like the way that they had like things structured over there. You know, um, I didn't like the way their system was set up. Um, I didn't really like the home time they were giving. I didn't. There was just a lot of things I didn't. Really, I wasn't too fond of over there. Well, let me let me tell you this. Uh, <laughs> you know, this is just here nor there, and it's already you know water under the bridge. But for the next time, you know, just just do your little due diligence a little bit more tighter. All right. So, listen. Um, so you you went back to CRST, but you know you must have you know you you must have left on good on good terms for them to, you know, the the offer your job back. But this time around, you you went to do the drug test and you was kicked out because of the hair follicles. And you said it's and you said yeah. this is because of secondhand smoke. So I I'm gonna I don't wanna now listen bro. I'm not coming after you and I'm not gonna and I'm not going to judge you or anything like that, but I am going to ask you this question. Your CDLs is important, bro. Those, once you get your CDL, no matter how you got it, you, you supposed to protect it. Why did you subject yourself around people that was, you know, that was, uh, smoke weed every day. <clears throat> well, as I explained to you, you know, one, it was a crazy situation because, okay, let me, let me basically explain to you what's going on. So I don't really have a permanent place to stay. I'm damn near homeless pretty much. So um, I, I, at the time I was going through some issues with my mother and I'm not very close with the majority of my family. And um, I, um, my mother wasn't allowing me to stay with her basically when I came on my home time. So I really had like no other, really no other option really, but to stay with my aunt. My aunt was the only person who was extending like an open hand for me to to stay with her. So I okay. decided to go over there and stay. Although she smokes and I'm, I'm very aware of the fact that my family, they partake in that sort of things. I didn't really think that I had anything to worry about per se for myself because I know that I don't eat drugs. I know that I don't smoke. And um, also, too, I've been told several times, like almost everyone that I ask, I mean, from the top professionals to you know, I mean, just an everyday average person on the streets, they all will tell you that you cannot fill a drug test from marijuana, you know, from secondhand smoke at that, you know, and, um, wait, and wait, so wait, I didn't wait, really wait, think you, that I had much to worry about. You know? Wait, wait now, you, you heard this from, uh, from, from other people in the industry or just from r random people in the streets? I mean, just, I mean, it's just, in, what I'm saying is that like, I've asked people who are like actual, like people like who, are, who you would think would be the top professionals to ask about this. So I've asked people in medical. I've asked people who are like the top tier people at my company. I've asked people. I mean, I've asked. What I'm saying is that regardless of the sources that I've gone to, I get the same answer, which is that you can't fail from from secondhand smoke. 
everyone is very adamant about the fact that you can't. So, I mean, even when I explained to them that I failed the from second hand smoke, you know, they were trying to like, you know, make it seem as if I was lying and that I was like trying to, and that, and they were trying to imply that I somehow ingested it from smoking, which I know is not true. Um, so, I mean, but I, but I got in contact with a medical examiner who gave me an honest answer and I did a little bit more research on it and I found out that you can in fact fail from secondhand smoke. So it, so it's, a uh, it's basically, it's, um, it's, it's, a uh, it's, I won't say a lie per se, but I guess someone is giving some sort of mis, was giving me some sort of misinformation, but yeah, neither, that's, but either that's, way. That's what they was doing, bro. Uh, let the, you know, sorry, sorry to interject, but that's what they was doing, bro. Yeah. They 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 gave you some. So I guess they, they gave you some bad I, I, information, a, my guy. <laughs> yeah. You, let, you was told by CRST, you know, hey, uh, thanks, but no thanks. Uh, did you go back uh, to see if you can, uh, you know, pr probably explain to them that hey. You know, it's a mistake. I was, you know, my aunt, she, I, you know, she has a medical condition and, you know, she has to smoke for medicinal purposes. And did, did you by chance? Get I've tried tested? explaining everything. I've tried explaining everything to them under the sun, man. And they, they just don't care. You know, they, they see that positive drug test and that's, that's all they care about to them, you know? <sighs> wow. All right, so now yeah. of course you're of course you're cleared from the clearing house, so that's that's a good thing. But now you're 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 having problems now of trying to find uh another company to get with due to the fact that they put that on your on your DAC report. What what report did they they put it on the 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 blacklist you from these other companies? Well, from my understanding when you um from my understanding, when you fail like a drug test at a particular company, once you try to seek employment at another company, you know, they're able to see everything, you know, in regards to your employment history. And I guess they're even able to see if you've ever gotten terminated from anywhere. So what happened was that they might not, I don't know if they're able to see per se that I failed the company hair test, but I believe that they're able to see that I got terminated from CRST. And once they find that out, then they're going to probably want to go and seek more and do more research into why that happened. And then that's usually when they find out that I uh, that, that it was due to um um a, 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 a it was due to what do you call it um the drug test that I failed for the here. I mean, um, also what? too. Wait, wait, um, wait, wait. Let me back you up a little bit. Um, okay. So wait, you was terminated how how can they say it was termination if you was going back to the company um i'm 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 not understanding well, that one no i got so what i'm saying is that i got terminated after the positive results i came back they were yeah. pending at the point and yeah. i had got reinstated temporarily but once the drug results came back they completely terminated me oh so i never had a okay chance to okay even, okay yeah. okay okay so they so they yeah. brought you on as an employee, but then turn around yeah. and terminated you. Wow, that's yeah, that's crazy right there. That yeah, damn. I I I guess, yeah. man. I guess you could probably have said like, well, hey, let's just wait until everything come back before you actually put me on paper as an employee. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm 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 sorry to hear that one, bro. That's. Man, that, that yeah, no, that's a punch, that's a punch in the stomach right there. Yeah. All right. So well, it's all good. So, and this is this is the part where where you know some people that's coming into the industry, you know, fail to understand that. I mean, you can literally give up. I mean, you can literally give up everything. And know that trucking, that trucking can like literally bankrupt you and put you, yeah. put you in a homeless shelter. Like you, you literally yeah. having a hard time finding legitimate work yeah. is now. Nah, but hey, Bossman, uh, I'm sorry, one second. Hey, uh, Bossman, can I, can I contact you? Can I, would it be okay if I call back in one second? Oh yeah, go ahead.
Are you back? Hello? Are you back? Oh, hey, boss man. I'm sorry about that. I was getting a call about um some stuff that's supposed to be coming for um for some for something that I had got. But um, okay. but yeah, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, but I was saying that that was pretty much everything that went down with that. Okay, there you go. There you go. All right. So what uh what what are what what are the companies that you applied for uh that's 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 not giving you a chance now. Well, um, the only ones that I put in like an application to is um, KMB Transport, um, and um, there are and I also there are a few others that I well I didn't really put an application into some of them yet, but I explained to them thoroughly my situation, and they had explained to me that um, if they even if it was just like a, a failed um, test from like a, a, a follow up test, and not like the DOT, um, not the DOT drug test. Um, they were telling me that I wouldn't be eligible to join their company. How, how many? How how many? Uh, how, how much time you got in in the industry so far? Man, I was only able to get about four months in. Oh, damn, that's easy. well. You know, if you got four, you know what? If you got four months, um, I mean, I, you know, I, 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 I hate to see you in this position, but, uh. I I would suggest not messing with the mega carriers uh at least for maybe about a about 6 months to a year because that's definitely going to pop up and it's going to raise a red flag and they're not going to bring you in uh for whatever reason even if you try to explain it um what you probably could do now is you know, go on Indie, Zip Recruiter, um, uh, Craigslist, and try to yeah. find, you know, try to find, you know, like owner operators or or small outfit. Or um, even though even though this company got bad reviews, they, you know, they bring in, they still bring in people in, you know, uh, giving them a second chance and that's uh super eagle um out of uh chicago super eagle? yeah super super eagle out of uh out of chicago illinois um they are uh, is it eagle? hold on what'd you say now is this is it su is it eagle like like as in like as in like the bird no ego like you know as in a person's ego uh e g o oh okay yeah yeah oh, okay. uh yeah super ego it's it's i i forgot it's it's a chicago land uh carrier i forgot where they're out at exactly but uh the only thing difference with them they'll bring you in with with four four months of experience uh you'll come in probably as a lease driver but uh also know that you have to pay for your own drug screening and you have to pay for your way to get out there so that that may or may not be in the budget for you but that just gives you you know that that might give you an open opportunity to you know give them a try also uh on top of that you can also try other um what do you call it you can also try other uh illinois company illinois black ops companies that they might give you uh give you a chance to you know maybe you can explain to them and be like you know hey you know i you know, I'm I I don't smoke weed. I just you know was around people that did, and maybe they could get you in the door. And I can also say that some black op companies, they don't even look at a DAC report. <laughs> some of them don't. They, you know, they they won't even. Some of them don't even look at a DAC report. But uh, whew, CRST man. <laughs> All right, bro. Well, hey, thank you very much for coming on and sharing your, uh, you know, sharing your experience and everything, man. Um, uh, lesson, lesson learned in this, any? Uh, well, I mean, of course, you know, the main one is, you know, to be more careful about the company I keep, but, you know, um, 
I mean, outside of that, I mean, I just think that it was just, I guess, the result of just, um, I guess, you know, having like maybe maybe a little bit of a misunderstanding or right. uh, maybe a little bit of a lack of information. And I guess just really not, I guess just, it was just unforeseen, you know. I mean, I would have never guessed in a million years this would have happened to me, you know. Um, also, uh, also, you, 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 you do have your, of course you do have your CDLs. Um, you know, you can use your CDL for more than just trucking. I mean, there's, you know, there's construction companies out there that you can, uh, that you can look at. Uh, there's, you know, there's some small carrier companies that, that will, you know, that will favor you highly because you have your CDL, you know, and of course you got the, you know, you got the bottling companies, you know, you got the Cokes, the Pepsis, the Red Bulls, um, you got beer, you know what I'm saying? You got the, the beer trucks. The thing, about those companies, the thing about a lot of those companies is that oftentimes though, you know, they're not going to really favor you if you don't have like at least like two to one year experience. And um, and the fact that I don't have that experience is kind of one of the things that's kind of like hurting me. So, um, well, I, I, uh, you you talking about companies like Coca-Cola. Now, if you driving, if you driving a semi truck then Yeah, maybe. But for one of them local trucks that, you know, that you go from. You know, from the from the distribution air. I mean, distribution to the stores, because see, you'll be considered like one of them uh, sales, quote unquote, web. You you'll be the person that will brain the product and take it off the truck and then set it up in the stores. You'll be that person. So I I don't think you need like two years to. To, to drive that you you will be considered a sales rep slash delivery driver you know for for that part right there but yeah if you i'll see man to be honest man i in a way i i just almost have lost all motivation for trucking i, I just i just kind of just part of me just doesn't even want to do anything related to trucking anymore to be honest i mean like away from this drug test i mean there's a lot of other things that i've just I'm trying to do truck driving that has just cost me so much time, so much money. And I'm just kind of just, it's just left me with a very bad impression. And I just, I'm tired of wasting my time, you know, like with all of this, because I'm very young and it's like, I, I got into trucking as a last resort, but it's like, you know, it's like, it hasn't even helped me out, you know, because of all the things that I've gone through. And at this point, I'm I'm kind of just more just willing to just kind of just put my my focus into other professions, you know. Exactly, and you know, and I'm look, man, I I'm I'm sorry that you I'm I'm sorry to hear that you're going through it, and and yeah. thank you for your testimony, man, because this is this, I mean, your story is what people need to hear, because what what people in social media and all these so called social media influences is over here saying, you know, over here making trucking the end. I mean, the be all thing to get into, you get into trucking, you will be able to make this, you'll be able to do this. And here you are a victim of circumstances. And, and now trucking is not helping you not one bit, you know? No, it hasn't. I mean, um, I mean, I know you probably have other callers, but, you know, really quickly, you know, just to pretty much give you a brief rundown of everything that I've dealt with. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You good. You good. Yeah. Um, well, basically, you know, the whole journey, as you know, well, honestly, even before that, um, you know, the thing with trucking is that trucking is like any profession out there. I mean, if you have the zeal to actually become better in life at anything, then eventually you can become better, given that you continuously strive to push yourself and advance yourself as much as possible. But unfortunately with trucking is that trucking, unfortunately just does not have the agency to allow people who genuinely want to become better to allow to, to really become better. And what I mean by that is that you have a lot of people out here who really want to drive trucks. They really want to become great at their craft, but because 
the big corporate companies that are out there, they have an incentive to make money. And when any and when anything is only money based, the quality and training goes down because they're mm-hmm. basically what happens with mm-hmm. is that they're looking to weed those out who are already good, quote unquote, from those who have potential but they need a little bit more work. And um and it becomes this thing to where it's like people who really want to truly succeed you really just can't, you know, because there's no one who's willing to take their time. I'll give you a prime example. You know, you go to these big mega carriers. Um, when you're finished, first of all, the, the training is a joke because, you know, they only even, they only give you like maybe like two weeks and the, and the, and the quote unquote training they give you is not even real training at that. It's Bats. merely just them Bats. just showing once or twice, do a maneuver and then you get in the truck and you have to hope that you're able to pass it. And it was, Fortunate for me, I was able to pass at CRSC because I had already been to another trucking school prior to that in Florida. So I had somewhat of a foundation. I had a trouble at the one in Florida because I was failing the alley back maneuver. And um, long story short, I ended up going to CRST just, you know, as a leap of faith. And it managed to work out over there, over there for me with me getting my CDL. Right. But um, because they because over there they tested parallel instead of alley instead of the alley dog, which I eventually learned to do the alley dog with. Um, but anyways, um, you know, after the training, you know, they put you on the road with quote unquote mentors who are really nothing more merely than lease purchasers who which they won't tell you this, they're actually investing in you. They're paying for you to be with them. So they want you to be damn near perfect when you when you first step in the truck with them. You know, they're not looking at you as somebody who's just out of CDL school. You have no experience. You need a little bit of more time, maybe a little bit more precision because they don't see themselves as being there to train you. They see themselves as being there for you to make money for them, you know? And um, so what happens is that when everybody is looking to make money, no one really cares about actually training anybody because people just want to make the money and that's it. Mm -hmm. They don't want to have to, you know, they don't, they don't want to have to try to actually maybe let them to mold you into what you need to be. And I had been put with several guys who was like this, you know? I mean, like, dude, like, being, like, going with trainers who don't want to train to them, talking to you terribly, to them, like, deciding, like, hey, I don't want to train you anymore. So they dump you in the middle of, like, some forbidden city that you've never been to. Um, I mean, like, I've just been through so much, so much, um, so much stuff. And, and every time I've gone through something with a trainer, I always have to come back home. And I mind you, I barely have the money to get home, barely have money for food. And, you know, the companies don't really want to take care of you. So it's like, it's waste, It's causing me a lot of time. It's costing me a lot of money. And then now the final straw with this, um, with this, um, with this, this drug thing that's going on, it's, it, it's put the icing on the cake. And what I think is so unfair about it is that, you know, you have, I think, I think, the DOT or whoever controls it needs to kind of somewhat ease up on it a little bit, you know, like I can understand if you tell your drug test, maybe you have to wait a month or some, something minor. But I mean, to tell me that you can't drive for seven freaking years or something that you failed that might not even have been the cost of it, of you actually being a, a smoker of a drug. You might've just failed it from a circumstance like mine, maybe being exposed to secondhand smoke or maybe taking something that's medical, or maybe taking something that gave you a false positive. Now you mean to tell me, because of a failed drug test that I can't ever um, drive until until like I until I'm I, I, I um you mean to tell me I can't ever drive again for like seven years? It's just you know I mean this whole process has made me feel like a criminal you know, and it, and it's like um I mean I got into this because and I really enjoy trucking I mean I enjoy driving the truck I enjoy the freedom that comes with it but I'm just over the treatment of these companies you know I'm over the treatment of how they treat you and it's really hard to really get your and the, and see the sad part is that it's really hard to really establish a base in trucking unless you've actually got your experience at these big companies, because whether you're talking about the smaller mom and pop companies or um, any, or even some of the local companies that do like local deliveries, most of them want you to have a certain amount of experience, which the only people who are willing to take a risk when you fresh out of CDO school are the big mega carriers, you know? Nice. So, it, so it, it's, um, you know, I mean, I know I said a bag of stuff there. But, no, 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 you good. You, know, you, you good. This, I mean, this is information that that people need to hear and understand. You know, this this is what they need to hear and understand because they 
like I said before, that you know they they hearing they they hearing all these you know TikTok influencers over here telling them, you know, uh, it's all about the money and it's all about great is is all about greatness out here, but they ain't tell nobody nobody ain't telling the dark side of it. And you know, with your story yeah. right, your story right here, you know, is to get them to to start thinking like, is this really for me? Is this the truth? Yeah, you know you need you you need people like you to come out and 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 explain what happened to you and and how you feel about it. You know, and I mean, yeah, no, I, and I agree with you about uh, DLT. Maybe maybe they can. You know, like I said, maybe they can pull back, which I don't think they're going to do, but maybe they can pull back, or maybe they can put a little bit of stipulations, but they going to come back and simply say, you know, how, how can we actually know? You know, we, it, it, it might be that it might be that case for you, but we don't know. So if we going to do it for you, we're going to have to do it for everybody. And that's, and that's what they're, that's what they're not going to do. Um, well, you know, you know, the unfortunate thing with drug testing, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, go ahead. You wanted to say something? Uh, no, 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 no. My fault. I'm listening. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I'm sorry. You know, the unfortunate thing about drug testing that I don't agree with is that one of the reasons that I've always been in opposition to drug tests is because I don't really believe that drug tests are an accurate representation of one of, I don't really believe that drug tests are an accurate re representation of someone actually having a drug problem or a substance abuse problem. You know, I mean, someone could take a drug test. I mean, you have, I mean, we see it all the time. We see people who smoke like crazy, but they're completely capable of functioning and doing their job. You know, um, I think that a drug test nevertheless could maybe hint that someone could possibly have a problem. And if they think that so, maybe they can probably seek to put them in some sort of evaluation to see if they're suitable to drive. But to tell me that someone can't drive a vehicle because they happen to fail a drug test, which they might have failed from something that has nothing to do with them even being a drug addict or having a drug problem. Like some like myself. I mean, look at it this way. If I had failed the urine sample, which, which thank God I didn't fail, but if I failed the urine test, and I got the violation on my on my um, clearinghouse. I would have literally have had to get in. The, I would have had to literally get. Um, I would have had to go have into SAP program. SAP program, and I would. Have to get, I'm sorry. Huh? No, you you would have had to get in the SAP program. Yeah, yeah. I would have had to go through the SAP program, and I would have had to have to have gotten a, a return to duty. I mean, I would have had to have done all this for like literally just nothing. You know what I mean? And and it's just um. You know, listen, I'm not going to tell people out there to not do trucking, you know, because, listen, I have a friend who got into trucking just like I did, and it's managed to work miracles for him. You know, he's managed to get in it, and he's managed to make some really good money doing it. He saved up a lot of money, but at the same time, he happened to be one of those people who just happened to have the, the, the favorable experiences. So the, the he rolled the dice, and I guess it happened to work out in his favor, but for every one person... I know 10 and 11 and 12 and hundreds of other people who have gone through terrible experiences with trucking. And I think that that number is a lot more, uh, uh, is a lot more of an accurate reflection of the reality of trucking in comparison to those few individuals who, who it happens to work for, you know, um, because I, I know several people who, who, um, who even call me now to this day who've gone through, um, CRSC with me and even other companies who, who have told me about, about all the crazy things they've gone through and you know and it's just I mean it's just it's, it's crazy man you know so um, it, I mean I'm not going to like I said I'm not going to tell people not to do it but what I will say is maybe really analyze why you want to do it and maybe like ask yourself is the time that you have to waste in trying to invest into getting a CDO and what you have to put up with really worth it because I've wasted so much time like doing this and like it's like, I mean, if I was going to be in the same predicament now that I had been in like a few months ago, I would have been better off literally just 
by going to school and getting into something else. You know what I mean? Instead of wasting almost $5,000 getting a license that is like, like put me more in debt than it's actually made me money. All right. That's what's up. Good advice, man. Good advice. Good advice. Joshua, man, yeah. thank you very much for coming on and, uh, and sharing your experience and, uh, and everything, man. And telling your testimony and your story, bro. Uh, I'm, oh, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm sitting back, I'm, I'm sitting back and, and, and listening and paying attention. I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, the people that's listening, you know, especially for the new people that's coming in, you know, if y'all, you know, if y'all around friends that's, that's doing extracurricular activities, y'all might want to consider, you know, not being around them for a little bit while you, you know, trying to get into trucking. If, if that's, the route that you guys trying to go, you know, so. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Joshua, sure. man, thank you very much, man. I really do appreciate it. Do you, um, uh, do you, do you, do you have a vehicle? Do you have a car? Is it, is it possible that you can, you know, do like ride sharing, you know, that, uh, that at least holds you over until you, until you find, until you find something? Yeah, I do actually have a car. All right. Uh, I mean, it's 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 not great, but it's an option. You know what I'm saying? It it it, it it's an option. It, at least it keep you, at least it keep you above board until you know you you actually, you know, find something, whether it's trucking or or not. So. Yeah. Well, um, oh, what I actually forgot to tell you, too, is that I actually got a job where I actually managed to get hired, like, driving the city bus. Um, okay. But the job doesn't start until, like, a few months from now. But... Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So, well, yeah. congratulations. I mean, congratulations on yeah. that. And uh, and hopefully, you know, if you, you know, that that might that might be something that might be something better. You know, that, that door right there just opened up for you. And it, it might, it, it might be a whole lot better than just trying to come out here and, 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 and sacrifice your life because that's exactly what you're doing when you're getting out into trucking. Yeah, no, you are, you are. Big G's got it locked, boy. Want you to me all night, yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real wet, yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G, yeah.